Hey, it's Tuesday afternoon, everyone. Happy quarantine to you. I hope you're not too bored with the whole situation. I know I'll get a little restless here, but hey, it's Brian Morgan Day. I'm so excited. Brian is one awesome of a gallery uh, artist here in Chicago, and I'm going to try to invite him in here. Um, Brian, if you're on, I think you are. Just uh, click the feed, and so I'll invite you in once you invite yourself in. All right, cool everyone, thanks for joining us. It is Tuesday in the afternoon. We are gonna feature Brian Morgan, and uh, it's gonna be awesome. Uh, I wanna take the opportunity while Brian's figuring out how to uh, tap into the feed here, I want to um, remind all of you that uh, we're still kicking. It's legal now for us to do curbside pickup, and uh, if you were so inclined to enjoy a brand new piece of artwork for your, your space, your quarantine space, and you must be getting tired of looking at the same old things, we've got a plethora of artworks here at the gallery. You can visit our website, that's j2gallery.com, and, uh, um, and uh, purchase something if you look on how to support the gallery on the very top of our page you'll see that a lot of our artists are offering unbelievable discounts uh to um to that to the to the website so uh check it all out all right so i'm gonna try to get brian in on here um not happening that way okay all right here's a picture of brian's thing look at that i can add a picture that's pretty cool this is one of brian's pieces he's gonna come and join us um, here in a second. All right. So, uh, let me try to get back into here. Brian, where are you? Looking for Brian. Come on. All right. Now I don't know how to get back to the screen, but, uh, boom. All right. Here we go. No, not getting them yet. All right. Come on, Brian. <laughs> Ah, live. Gotta love that. All right. Boom, pow. Let's go in here. Go live with this pigeon life. Here it comes. I think I'm going to get him right now. Boom, 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 bam, bam. And not working. Okay. All right. Let's try it again. Come on, Brian. Boom. All right. Well having some technical difficulties right there, but waiting on Brian. Um, again, if you uh, visit our website, that's j2gallery.com. Uh, let me kind of give you a little tour of the gallery while we're waiting for Brian. If you're in there, Brian, you gotta hit the thing to come in and join us. And uh, um, so let me give you a little flip around here. There's some of Brian's artworks. How freaking cool is that guy, huh? Just take a look at the detail. We're gonna get Brian in here and uh, he's hopefully gonna join us. All right. Here's another piece of his. I think he kind of highlighted this piece and showed us how he did some things with it.
Hello. Like, All right. There he is, kind of. Oh, there My he phone is. doesn't work. Hey, Fortunately, the wife's crazy. phone does. <laughs> All right. Hey, man, I'm oh. glad it worked out. That's great to see you. Here we yeah, go. Yeah, right. Sorry. Here. That's okay. Let me, let me get back to this. difficulties. It's live. What the heck? But right. hey, ladies and gentlemen, it's Brian. If, if you had to use the phone and help and uh, called an IT friend and we just tried a different phone and here we go so now it's all right uh, man that's all good hey it's good to see you how you holding up oh terrific having a great time actually I kind of like being stuck at home I could get used to this yeah, get a little extra studio time with all that right <laughs> you sure can right that's nice. the trick nice right, so what yeah. you've been doing to stay busy you just been hold up down there you're doing some home projects cooking what's your kind of thing? yeah well actually right the um the i had just turned in those two paintings to you guys for that show uh the the punk uh, steampunk one and yeah, with sure. those being completed i came home and heard about this you know things starting to go down and i'm like oh i need to get some paint for the house and start some projects that I thought I had like two weeks to do some stuff. I needed to fix the ceiling and whatnot. And I, uh, uh, I, I took care of that and the time carried on. So I got really ambitious and I built a beautiful closet or attic door out of, um, <clears throat> out of a hole in the wall. But the hole in the wall was previously covered by this piece of wood here. And so I took that piece okay. of wood and I turned it into uh, what's going to be another painting. It, uh, I'm unable to get to the hardware store to go do my normal selecting of, uh, you know, woods for the painting I had planned on starting next. Yeah. So, right. Uh, we'll get you there. You've got to use what you got, right? I mean, that's, that's, you know, that's got, part right. of it, right? Right. Exactly. You can't have so. everything perfect and all the extra ingredients. You just have to kind of use what's there at your disposal. Right. It's a fun one. It's got some holes in it and all kinds of things. It's a really heavy piece of wood. It's like several different things all sandwiched together by somebody. It's like they, they didn't want anybody to go back through that hole again, I think. Yeah. But, uh, <laughs> right. No one's gotten through um, my hole. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> so, I, I'm running prints, you know, keeping the printer going because that's the only way to keep those printers going. Right. Uh, I've been right. Taking care of that. And uh, I had um, uh, a quite a fun time. I redid all of the trim and molding, mitered a bunch of new, you know, baseboards for the house. I live in a, a 1923 bungalow on the Chicago's west side. And so okay. I've, I've just been restoring it. And with all this time, I've been able to get quite a lot done. So that's awesome, man. It's good. It's it's kind of you know. I mean, at least you're finding ways to stay busy. I mean, instead of just going stir crazy, it's uh, oh it's yeah, great to up some good home projects. It sounds like that's right. That's right. I'm tackling the yellow jackets outside. They they moved into the old birdhouse, which I had to uh, oh no discard, and so I built a new <laughs> birdhouse. Yeah, they um they want to go right back into it, so I can't put the birdhouse out until you know next year probably so they well, who knew you, you had a friend in a, in a yellow jacket huh i know right i don't i love the you know the little bees and this and such but um the yellow jackets are very aggressive and that they're yeah. gonna, they were trying to live right above our uh, our garden area where we're at all the time and they were problematic last summer and so i had to try to get rid of them over the spring but I, as I find is the norm, I didn't get rid of them. No. <laughs> <laughs> I moved the nest all the way down the block to the railroad tracks. I thought it, that was probably a mistake. They all flew back. Hey, man, let's turn, uh, let's, let's turn a little bit towards um, your amazing artwork uh, that you do. You, you kind of have uh, two themes always going, uh, birds mm -hmm. and uh, bald-headed, crotchety guys. Right. Right? Yeah. Or What's uh, what's the deal with all that? Why don't you share your inspirations and what you're kind of trying to uh, uh, get inspired by, or what what is it? What, what's the affliction with uh, yeah, the right? Birds? It's it's it, it is odd. As much as I, I sometimes try to um, break out of that mold by drawing other things, um, I always just find myself coming back to these guys. There's, I, I think like. You know, the, the, the old soul type person in me, especially as a younger man, really just admired the old crotchety men, the whole get off my lawn and, or the, you know, just stop put my foot in your ass kind of guy, just the hard, <laughs> the hard tough, like, you know, the, the underdog guys too, though, the ones that were kind of beat down and rough, but really fun and exciting to me, I think. There's, a, a, there's like a, I don't know, some, 
you know, romantic imagination of them being maybe cooler than they necessarily are. My version gets to be the cooler version. Uh, you know, and I, I tend to do liberties and just make up, you know, what's really going on. Like, per se, the, the guy that I just made today, I just discovered yes. that um, as I'm putting his body together, see if I can find it right over here. Big old hole. This guy obviously had hip surgery and it bothers him, <laughs> you know. So do you find that you start giving them more and more uh, as you're kind of painting, they get a little another layer of personality in there too? For sure, I, right. Kind of by the time I'm done, right. By the time I'm done, it's a, it's a whole new person in my head, who, whoever that is. It's like the guys at the bus stop. I, um, you know, they, uh, who knows who they are, but I've invented who they are in my head. And I like to paint that person down and, and yeah. make it another character. And so maybe uh, it starts with the guy you saw in the park, but really ends with the guy that's on the corner of like Chicago and Michigan. Right, right. right. And there's always composites, right? I mean, the Pigeon yeah. Man, um, there's this guy who's much younger than the one I recently painted, uh, but he's covered in the pigeon, standing at the uh, road at North Avenue and the off ramp of the highway. And, uh, you know, you can see him every day. They don't sure. look the same. But I had to right. rechange him to what, you know. Yeah. I, so, so I, 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 you, you, it's always crotchety guys. You never do crotchety ladies, so to speak. Right. And so I, uh, this confounds me as well. I, I don't know why I don't paint more women. Uh, right. I have at times there was the, um, nevertheless, she persisted painting uh, with uh, his two old, you know, ladies uh, or, or one old lady moving either way with spray paint on a wall. Right. You know, <laughs> um, but right, it uh, it does always come back to yet another guy I'm painting. Um, right. It's, uh, well, I think guys and guys in nature are just a little bit more crotchety anyway, right? I guess, right? <laughs> <laughs> was, I mean, when I was younger, it was my, my originally I painted so much more political work, and usually I was railing against a, a, a male figure, so it would just was naturally male centric work, and. Uh, I guess I just carried that through and I just kind of, you know, dissolved a little away from being so angry after the Bush administration. I kind of got worn out with the politics. <laughs> and I'm like, right. I'm not doing all, any right? good. I'm going to spend my time painting things I enjoy rather than things I hate. And yeah. uh, hence the birds was really kind of a, that's about when so many of the pigeons came out. Um, yeah, the pigeons, in, you, you know, you kind of, you have a nice little Chicago, um, usually a little bit of a Chicago flair to it, whether it's just the colors or sometimes you actually put up the whole, uh, uh, the flag, so to speak. Right, right. Um, yeah, sometimes but, I just paint them the red, yellow, and, or red, white, and blue of the Chicago flag is the, the right. colors. Right, and then this, I don't know if you can see the little picture above my shoulder here, but I have the, the piece. Oh, is right that here. in the thing? I did yeah, that's it right there. I don't, I don't know how like, that I can't happened. get that off the <laughs> I was playing around trying to get you on the feed and then all of a sudden this popped up. So I'm like, okay, that's kind of cool. And it's just kind of hanging out on my shoulder here, which right? you know, sure is. <laughs> I thought so fun. listen, yeah, let, let's talk about birds. I mean, birds have, um, people probably don't know this, but birds have, are a big part of your life. For sure. And I was really hoping to have bird, my Amazon parrot with me, but she's really mad at me today because okay. she's on my shoulder earlier and I accidentally threw the hand towel over this shoulder she hates towels. Oh, and it just bad thought bad. I was trying to kill her, and so she won't <laughs> let me come near her now. <laughs> <laughs> you're you're in the you're in the dungeon for a while. I mean, I mean, yeah. she heard me say that. She just went <laughs> like she said, "You're right." <laughs> so yeah, and if people don't realize, and I think, realize, and, I, uh, think uh, I think people are uh, don't realize that the bird is probably going to outlive all of us. Correct. Oh, I know yes. this. Yeah. Uh huh. <laughs> It, it, it'd be nice if I had at least one year of peace before I died. She, you know, <laughs> but they're very loud creatures. Amazon parrots were meant to be in the Amazon. And uh, unfortunately, she was caught wild as a baby um, by this evil place called Noah's Ark that got run out of business because they got busted red-handed trafficking birds illegally from South America. Um, but not before this poor girl was stolen from her family and her land. And my parents bought her when she was one. And, uh, and so I've grown up with her. She, that was 1981, I think. And okay. I was so there's been a crazy bird flying around my head my whole life. <laughs> I think I didn't, the first time I, I think I, I ever went over to your uh, house when you were living someplace else and 
and we were carrying a very large something, heavy something up the staircase. And all of a sudden, this thing just comes flying by my head. I'm like, what yeah. the heck is that? Yeah, she's better than a dog. If she doesn't expect you, she's going to fly right at you. Yeah, she gave me the warnings. Like, don't mess yeah. with my, my territory. Yeah. Yeah, she definitely flies by anybody. She, we, we have cat or one cat now in the house. But um, she always dominates the, the air. And the cats dominate the ground, and they try not to intermix. You know, right, so. right. It's a neutral zone right there in the middle, right? Right. Mm -hmm. They fight each other, and I don't know who's going to get hurt worse. You know, right? Yeah, I don't want to see that fight. Right. <laughs> um. Yeah. So, so it's not really parrots that you paint, though. You you do paint more pigeons and that kind of the, right. Uh, yeah. The the parrot, um, you know, by default is the bird that I, I took care of. I, we bonded when I was growing up, so when I moved out, I took her with me. Um, but uh, like. No, no one should really have a pet bird. I mean, I don't recommend it. It's just they so belong out in the wild. I think it's very tough for them to, to live in here. She's actually right. agoraphobic. She hates the windows now. I thought she'd love windows, but she gets okay. really upset and scared and looks at everything out there. It's oh. strange. But, I mean, I do guess there that's uh, – I love, I love my birds so much. And I guess I, I try to paint the, um, like, just the sparrows and the pigeons, the birds that belong around here, because they're the yeah. ones that – everybody knows and enjoys you know i feel like uh that guy who lost his shaker of salt if i painted the parrot all the time but um you know a musician but uh yeah. yeah so we you know we keep the uh the, the pigeons and the sparrows and just the local birds are kind of what's always on my mind but, I guess, uh, um, another thing and if people want to follow you on instagram uh they can kind of get a little tease of this uh is that uh kind of an um underlining I don't know, hobby of yours every once in a while is to search for chicken bones on the ground. Oh, it's not a search. Chicken me. Me. <laughs> I don't like finding them. It's gross. But I just, I guess I look at the ground a lot when I'm walking and I just come across chicken bones every day. I was sweeping the alley up yesterday and there was this old chicken bone. It had to have been out there what for is that? years. But there it was. Just sitting there. People just think that they can like eat. I don't know. I've never really seen the people eating chicken down the street, but they must do it all the time. And they just it take it and flip it down on the yep. ground. huh? I think maybe it happens after we all go to bed. Uh, you know, maybe yeah. it's an overnight activity. <laughs> eat chicken in the dark at night. But and throw chicken it on the people ground. come out, right? Yeah. Yep. <laughs> I had something to do. So listen, um, let's let's segue into um, into uh, kind of like the the arc that I've known you of your your career when I first met you um you were working a lot on canvas and uh Low you with very very heavier paints so to speak right i just my phone just died i just plugged it in but okay um, well uh, I, I was telling that, that that when i first met you you kind of were working on canvas a lot and that you were right. pretty heavy-handed on the paint there was a lot of lot of paint a lot of thick paint on there and you've kind of segued a little bit um now it's more about um uh, on wood, a that's one difference, and then you really—it's a little bit softer touch that you have on that. Um, you want to touch right. on the whole art journey that you kind of took there, and and why you've kind of graduated onto the board as opposed to the canvas. Well, I really wanted to bring out my drawing in the finished piece, and when yeah. I worked with oil and canvas, there's no drawing; it was all painting, and uh, I would. I was always like doing swirling lines with the paintbrush, but I could never really get the, the you know, the pencil thin, pen thin line that I really wanted, especially because I was painting with a knife half the time and it was so thick. <laughs> but yeah, right, um, right. It, it, like, I guess I, I really just wanted to transition to using the India ink uh, pen, the, the dipping quill, one of these, uh, you know, the old fashioned kind. Right. That, that just uses the, that have this, right here from earlier, but just uses the ink well and you dip it and you go nuts with it. It's such a cool line and I really, really enjoy drawing with it. And uh, for some, I just really wanted to put that into the paintings. So wood seemed like a nice hard choice because it gave, it gives a texture in the background that can still be negative space that doesn't have to be filled in by anything, just the nice grain of the wood. and. I found that was also an issue with the oil painting. I'd have some sketch, but I'd leave a big, huge piece of negative space that just would suggest the rest of the, the person's body. When I got to the oil painting, I felt that I somehow needed to finish that body off. And it really okay. lost a lot of gesture on me. And I figured the wood, 
having its own background that you don't need to mess with or worry about could just become the white of the sketch pad that the original right. idea came from. Yeah. And that's, that's, it, yeah, it's almost like, a, you know, it, it's really neat to see an, an, an arc of how you kind of progressed and discovered that. And I think your hand is so much more amazing now than it was when I first met you, because there's a, yeah. just the subtleties of it. You, you don't, you don't overwork it, so to speak. You kind of learn that less is more. Right. Right. Yeah, yeah, right, for sure. And and just being more comfortable with this pen, too. It took a long time to really get familiar with using it on the wood. You know, it's it's quite apt to stab into the wood. It was way more apt to stab into canvas, so, you know, the wood was better. But right. um, they really were designed for right-handed people. I understand now why the nuns used to slap the person, because way before <laughs> the ballpoint pen came out, everybody had to use one of these, and it simply wouldn't work very well. If you were pushing this along the page all the time, you'd just be stabbing into the paper. Yeah. So okay. there was probably a bit of function to that, not just being totally witchy. But um, yeah, it's just it's a really fun tool. I've gotten you know much more used to using it, so now I, I can make full circles and and whatnot. Actually, I use both hands, I guess, when I'm using it because sometimes you just have to use the right hand. Right. Uh, but the um, I also have been moving back into the color only recently, which is fun because. For a little while there, I moved into a pretty monochromatic palette of just like kind of the Chicago blue and white and black and the wood grain. And again, that was going searching more towards the drawing that I was taking this off of, and trying to keep that drawing really present in the completed painting. Yeah. But now I'm, you know, I used to use so much color with the oils, I've really started missing that color. And, you know, the, that's why I love red, because uh, even in the the monochromatic ones, I always sneak in some red somewhere in there that just pops. And maybe it's not so much that you even really see it, but it, I think it, it helps out a lot. Um, red is a great finishing touch. I, I forget uh, right off the hand, but your artist who always paints a bit of tip of red on his nose. Is yeah, that beautiful... would be uh, Bruce Rewarda. Yeah. Yes, mm -hmm. right. So I, I love that. Like, that's, that's exactly how red is used the best. Like, just these great little highlights. It's like the cherry on top of the cake. You know. pops right? right yeah right yeah but yeah then i started wanting the rest of my colors back my oranges and the yellows and the purples <laughs> and everything else and i'm like oh i'm just gonna maybe start going full color again and uh, <laughs> right right so i've been moving into that yeah you have I, i've definitely noticed a lot of your newer pieces like what i was showing at the very beginning of this uh live interview um the piece that i have on the wall right now has so much more color than we're used to seeing from you right um, at least recently you know and it's it's kind of refreshing to see it's like wow this thing really pops and you're kind of you, i see your kind of joy in adding, yeah. playing with the color in there a little bit exactly it's so much fun because like the way i see the the color um is, is there's always a balance so that if there's you know a, a shock of uh, you know a yellow down here to catch a highlight well yeah. i want that to also be here and maybe here so that it'll give a triangle to balance out those colors so you could even throw a blue where it doesn't belong, but if that blue is the shadow here and like the shadow here and a piece up here, then it, it fits. It doesn't look all like, why is that blue right in the middle of his face? It, it's right. balanced right. somehow by the, by the different, um, you know, yeah, just by the, the, the trifecta of the color. You know? Sure. So another theme that you, um, that you like to play in is uh, cycling. Um, I know that's uh, a true passion of yours and uh uh you, you always show up in some kind of crazy bike contraption or have your artwork wrapped around rubber tires or something like that uh right inner teams are great bungee cords yes they are <laughs> and you get to repurpose them over and over and over again right, right? <laughs> yeah um but talk a little bit about the biking and how that's a big part of your life well, it's um, indeed uh, ever since a, a little kid and seeing the movie Breaking Away, uh, where. Oh, know, right. That's a great movie. Yeah. Isn't that wonderful? It was, it's like a coming of age movie from the college in Bloomington, Indiana. Uh, this yeah. boy who, who uh, you know, races against the Italians in this big, you know, the little 500 uh, uh, you know, Indianapolis bike race. And I've just been so in love with that machine ever since seeing that. It's such a beautiful, simple, you know, bicycles just anybody can ride one anybody can fix one you can go anywhere with them they're they're just really uh, you know fun not so safe all the time you know because drivers and whatnot so right 
thankful for you know protected bike lanes and such <laughs> but uh, <it's, laughs> right <laughs> um, they are they're just it's a it's a wonderful way of getting around you know there's nothing like riding uh especially if you're in an open place where there's not any traffic around going no handed and just pedaling on down the street well you can do that right now you can go down the middle i tell you you can go down to the loop right now and yeah. no hands down the south avenue <laughs> yeah right <laughs> that's so that, eerie right? yep <laughs> So there's a piece where um, uh, it's funny because it, it involves like bicycles. Um, it's called Maintenance Required. And mm. I'm trying to pull it up on my computer here um, mm. because it's amazing. Uh, it's, 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 it's kind of a, a, a couple that is, um, I guess, he's in having some relationship problems. Uh -huh. uh, let me try to flip it up so we can show people. Um, but it's... Uh, Oh, there, it oh, there you go. You did it. Yeah. Yeah. Right, so I think so maybe like, he came out of the coffee shop without asking her if she wanted any. Yeah. And that was the last straw for her. She's like, you know, this, I'm just not getting any respect here. She's going to take <laughs> off. And he's like, oh, dang it again. You know, but, uh, there, you know, there's just some other dude working on his bike. It, it, maybe it's like a place where the messengers go get their coffee in the morning or something. And right. He's tooling away. But it gives a nice little feeling of, I think, like that early morning city, uh, you know, with the, in the distance, there's even the um, Salvation Army um, uh, water tower sticking up. I don't think you can quite. Oh, yeah, you can see it in there. It's just got mm -hmm. a little red dot on it. But, uh, um, yeah, this was just a fun one to kind of hit like what a I wanted to draw the buildings in the neighborhood and, uh, yeah. you know, just sort of give it a you know, a real local sense, but also, you know, it's any city anywhere. No, I just love it. I think the title's perfect because maintenance required. Like, obviously, there's the obvious one where the guy's working on the bike, but then the relationship and their body language where she's just like, whatever, on the bike, and he's like, <sighs> Yeah, he didn't put in the work there. He was not being respectful. He, right. Oh, that bike's broken. <laughs> Can't leave your bike out in the rain all the time. It's going to rust, and it won't work. Yeah. Yeah. So I'd say in the arc of your career that I've been following, um, you hit a little dark point at one point where you could, your, your paintings were definitely like showcased that that you were having some um, some some issues medically and you were on some crazy painkillers for a while. And some of those paintings mm -hmm. are, are, are really I mean, they're they're dark. I mean, you look at them now, they're they're dark. I'll try to pull one up here. Yeah, um, pull one up. But uh, yeah, it was it's, uh... A yeah. decade of massive leg surgeries culminating in just having the leg cut off because I was sick and tired of it. And uh, it, yeah, that was, uh, there was definitely, there's a good period of time going on there. <laughs> <laughs> oh, there we go. Yep. So that guy, um, it was the best of times. It was the worst of times. Um, yeah. And, and right. This would be like, you're off work again because you're going through another surgery. And right. Uh, you know, it's kind of reminiscent of my basement studio. The guys downstairs in his basement. And he's yeah, probably real. You know, dark times. He couldn't afford the electricity, so he's he's got the, his own jerry rigged up thing. You were pedaling, right? Yeah, just so he can read his his favorite Charles Dickens book. Right. <laughs> and I love the fact that it's Charles Dickens. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's, you know, we're not, no, no copyright infringement. Here. <laughs> well, Brian, I really, really appreciate you taking the time and doing the Facebook feed earlier. We got to see you uh, kind of in action doing his, your thing on your, on, and, and inviting us into the studio and showing us around and kind of diving into what you, you're thinking about behind a lot of these paintings. Um, I just want to remind everyone that Brian is generously offering a 15% discount off of all of his artworks. Um, Brian, like the rest of us, are pulled up, quarantined, and and job, life, it's all kind of trying to figure it out, mm -hmm. but you could use your assistance uh, if you feel um, the, the need to get some more artwork on your walls. We're all corned up, in the little same same looking house in the room, yeah, yeah. so you got to add some new life into it, uh, yeah. even if you like this little guy, wall. the Chicago flag right here, one of his more popular ones. Um, go to the website, j2gallery.com, and uh, just type in Brian as the promo code on the checkout, and you're going to get 15% off all cool. of his work. Yeah, right on. Thank yeah. you. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. But, 
you rock. You stay safe. And uh, really, really appreciate you uh, taking well, the time. To appreciate enjoy. everything you guys are doing to try to stay alive. Yeah, you know it. Rock on, brother. All right. Be safe. All right. Bye. <laughs> Bye. Yeah, so there it is. Brian Morgan. He is the bomb, I'm telling you. So if you are interested, again, please go to the website, support us, support the gallery. If you uh, still want to think about it, you can buy a gift certificate. We have those on there. And uh, bravo. I love you guys all. Tune in tomorrow. We've got another cool cat, Ty Taiole, living in Salt Lake City. Um, a lot of people know his works as well. And uh, we'll dive into his brain tomorrow. But until then, you all be safe, be sound, and think creatively. All right. Bye, y'all.